a quick new idea daily from the world's greatest TEDx talks. I'm your host, Atosa Leone, and this is TEDx Shorts. Artificial intelligence, or AI, is ever-present in our daily lives, from your phone to the smart speakers in your home. But are these advancements moving at a pace where humans and computers will really compete for intellectual dominance? Louis Rosenberg is an AI researcher, and today he explores how humanity can look to the collective intelligence in the natural world and inspire new collaborations. A single bee has a brain so tiny, it can't even conceive of the problem. But when they think together as a system, they can solve it so accurately that a human brain would be hard-pressed to match them. So how do they do this? By forming a swarm intelligence, a brain of brains that combines the knowledge and wisdom and insight and intuition of the group and converges on a single unified decision. I know what you're thinking, really? These are honeybees. How do, they, how do they express opinions? How do they converge on solutions? Remarkably, they do it by vibrating their bodies. Biologists call this a waggle dance, because to us, it looks like the bees are dancing. But really, they're generating signals that represent their support for the various home sites under consideration. By combining these signals, the bees engage in a multi-directional tug of war, pushing and pulling on the decision until they converge on the one solution that they can best agree upon, and it's usually the optimal solution. And unlike us humans, the bees don't entrench, they don't fall into gridlock, they don't settle for a bad solution that nobody's happy with, they find the solution that's best for the group as a whole. I point this out because the phrase hive mind often gets a bad rap, implying a group of mindless drones who can't think for themselves. But honestly, it's just not true. A hive mind is nature's way of aggregating the diverse perspectives of a population and maximizing their collective wisdom. And let's be honest, we humans are pretty smart as individuals, but in groups, we're not always that wise. That's because groups don't do a great job of combining their diverse perspectives. A swarm is the opposite. It's flexible and dynamic, revealing where we agree most. In other words, swarming doesn't just make a species smarter, it makes a species wiser. Now, we shouldn't feel bad that honeybees are so far ahead of us. Give us a few million years and we'll catch up. Which brings me back to the problem I started with. We may not have a few million years. Our next big evolutionary pressure point may hit us within just a few decades which is why I asked myself a big question. Why can't we humans amplify our intelligence now? If birds and bees and fish can form a brain of brains, why can't people do it? That's what I wanted to know. So a few years ago, I founded a unique artificial intelligence company called Unanimous AI. We build hive minds. So let me show you what we've been up to. This is a natural swarm, and over the last few years, We've been modeling how swarms like this amplify the intelligence of groups, and we've been using those models to create the algorithms and interfaces to allow humans to form similar swarms online. This is a human swarm. It's about 100 people all working together to move that glass puck. Each of the little magnets you see is controlled by a person logged in from somewhere around the world. By moving their magnets, they're varying their opinions in real time, pushing and pulling on the system, in much the same way that honeybees do by waggle dancing. So how can a swarm like this answer questions? Let me give you some examples. Last year, CBS Interactive challenged us to predict the Kentucky Derby, and not just the winner, the first four horses in order. In horse racing, that's called the Superfecta, and last year it went off at 540 to one odds. Now, we didn't know anything about horse racing. We had never done anything like this before, but we were game, so we formed a swarm of 20 horse racing enthusiasts. Not experts, just enthusiasts, and we had them think together as a system to predict the winners of the race. So here's a swarm predicting the first place finisher, Nyquist. We did the same thing for second place, third place, fourth place, and then the reporter wrote a story and published the results. She even went to the Kentucky Derby 
placed a bet on a superfecta and tweeted out her ticket, which put some pressure on us. So how do we do? We nailed it. I placed a $20 bet and won $11,000. The reporter placed a bet. A bunch of her readers placed bets. Now, now, this is remarkable, but what's even more amazing is that of the 20 people in the swarm, not a single one of them got all four horses right on their own. In fact, by taking a vote, they only got one horse right out of four. But by thinking together as a swarm, they were perfect. That's the power of swarm intelligence. The TEDx talk you just listened to was recorded at a TEDx event in Kansas City, Missouri. All TEDx events are independently organized by volunteers who believe in TED's mission of ideas worth spreading. Special thanks to the organizing team at TEDx KC. Want to listen to more TEDx talks? Explore the entire archive on the TEDx YouTube channel. I'm Atosa Leone. Thanks for listening, and see you tomorrow.